Welcome to Dime Generation. I'm Bunny Williams, and with me is... Stephen Scott Norfolk. How you doing? Oh, I'm doing good and bad. In yeah. everyone. <laughs> you know? Okay. Uh, what's the good? Uh, the good is I found out that I'm getting my first disability payment on the 17th of December. Yeah. But it doesn't say anything about my back pay. It just right. says my monthly amount. Was that how it was whenever uh, your girlfriend got a disability? Or do you remember? I don't remember that part. Okay. So I'm worried that I'm not going to get my uh, back pay for the last six months. I kind of remember the back pay being like a like kind of a surprise. Oh, okay. Like we didn't know we were getting that. Okay, well, hopefully it will be. But my, uh, yep, first payment December 17th, so. And uh, that's, well, first day not smoking. Yeah. Yeah, trying to quit. Going to do a cold turkey. So far, so good. I haven't punched any babies. Have you been around any babies? I have not. I have almost you kicked might, the crap out of a couple of dogs, though. You might have to get around a couple of babies just to make sure. Just to make sure I'm not punching them. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, I got a couple of dogs that I'm pretty pissed off at. Yeah. My buddies and my dog. Because my buddy's dog, my roommate, his dog is totally out of control, like homeless dog that listens to no one who shits and pisses wherever it wants, who chews up everything in sight. Yeah. Who runs to come when its name's called. Right? right? And my little dog's all, you know, good to go. He's, he's yeah, he's he pooping and peeing in the house. Yeah, he's a puppy. He hasn't been trained yet. Right. You know, he's not he's not doing it out of fucking spite though, like the my roommate's dog. My yeah. roommate's dog was outside for half an hour. Comes running straight inside and pisses a huge puddle right on the floor. Oh. Weren't you just fucking outside? Uh-huh. So now it's teaching my dog all these bad habits. And the newest one today that I pissed me off because I had actually trained my dog to come when his name was called. Yeah. And now, oh, no, because what mama, his dog is is my dog's mama. Because Mama runs away when you call her name, now so does my dog. So it's impossible to get my dog to come in the house. So I'm going to have to have it on a leash anytime I go outside and stuff. He can't just run around like he was, happy and free. So at this point, I'm thinking, "Mm, yeah, I don't want to be a dog owner. (laughs) I'm thinking they might have to go to the pound or the Chinese restaurant or something. Yeah. You know, so yeah, do you have a restaurant in mind? I don't actually. Uh I mean, you know, Szechuan Garden in Dickinson, uh the food's good, but I don't think it's a dog. Yeah. There was a buffet in Dickinson that everybody said was dog meat, and I was like, Well that's the best damn dog I've ever eaten. It's probably not true, but I, I've seen on Facebook today that Chipotle is getting investigated for dog and cat meat. Nice. <laughs> That's why I always have the carnitas. Facebook. I didn't double check it. Huh? Yeah. Well, did you check Snopes? No. I didn't check anything. I didn't even think about it until you started talking about the dogs. <laughs> no. That's my rant for the day, people. Yeah. If you enjoyed it, you know, let us know on our Facebook page, which is what? Uh, our Facebook page is Dying Generation. Just do a search for Dying Generation and you'll find us. Our email address is dying at undeadcow.com. Or follow us on Twitter at Dying Generation. <laughs> That's pimpin' hard. I mean, hard pimpin' hard. Because, <laughs> you know, pimpin' ain't easy, but it's necessary. Them hoes ain't going to pimp themselves. No, they're not. And no. I have yet to check back with with uh, Stitcher to even find out what the hell that shit's even about. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah? <clears throat> yeah. 
Yep, so I'm sitting saying, here yeah. at work. Yeah. Yeah, sitting here at work listening to the, the sound of the construction workers working on the houses. Keeping the keeping the docks safe? I am keeping the houses safe, yeah. Yeah. And uh thought I thought I was going to catch some criminals last night because there was a shady vehicle-like truck cruising around real slow with its uh, tailgate down. Yeah. And kept going by houses and stuff. So I just la 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 pulled up right behind him and just followed him around the neighborhood until he left. <laughs> yeah. It was it was a tense game of cat and mouse. <laughs> not 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 really. It was more like just you know cruising down the Ave on a Saturday night or something. I I did a security job for for a little while when I first went back to school. Mm-hmm. I don't know, I was 25, 27, something like that, I forget. Um, and my mother was sick, so, so like, I really couldn't afford to do much, you know? Yeah, um, yeah. So I had a security job there, and the first place they put me was <coughs> this dock out east uh, where you get into much more affluent neighborhoods and shit. Uh-huh. So these people weren't exactly rich, but they were like, rich enough to own some pretty big fucking boats and shit. Uh-huh. You know? And I would show up at 9, which was the closing time of the dock, uh, and lock the gates. <laughs> you know, sit in a little shack for the rest of the fucking night. Yeah. That was it. There was a phone. I would, there was a phone in the shack, so I would just show up, call into the office, hang up, and then when I was ready to leave, I'd pick up the phone again, call, and hang up. Yep. <laughs> That's basically what I'd do. I'd send a text message to my boss saying I've arrived on the site, and when I leave, i send him one leaving the site, and that's it. Yeah. So I would uh, I would do my homework there. Yeah. And, um, after a while, toward the end, because um, then the dock would close for winter and they wouldn't have security. Yeah. So, um getting toward the end, like, as soon as I knew nobody was going around, I had that shift from, like, 9 to 5, like, 9 in the evening to 5 in the morning or something like that. Yeah. I'd split out at 3, 3.30 or something like that and call them from home. <laughs> <laughs> this must have been before the days of caller ID. It most certainly was. <laughs> um, yeah, but, uh, go ahead. Yeah, then they put me in a, in, like, a like a Jewish hospital or uh, a clinic or something like that. Uh huh. You know, they had patients, but it wasn't like a full blown hospital. Yeah. Uh, and I was just, I would kind of be the receptionist. You know, I was just at the front desk, hello, who are you, that kind of stuff, just got to sign in. Um, but it was overnight, so nobody fucking showed up. The only one who would show up would, would be whoever my boss or supervisor was. They'd come uh-huh. around and check at the hospital. They didn't check the other place. Yeah. Uh, and and he started just getting down on me about my hair, you know. But you got to cut your hair. you got to cut your hair. Uh, and I was like, well, okay. <laughs> I, don't, I don't plan on it, you know. Yeah. And then, uh, one day he comes in and he's like, I can make you cut your hair. And I was like, <laughs> no, no, you can <laughs> No, you can make me find another job, but you can't make me cut my hair. <laughs> and, I, and I walked out. You did. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> I, I, I left that place and I was like, fuck you. <laughs> you were like, you want to see a magic trick? Poof, I just disappeared. Yeah. You know, it wasn't like I was, like it was any kind of great fucking job or anything. And I was under a lot of fucking pressure at the time, too. You know? Yeah. Well, this pays minimum wage, and it's just nothing. I mean, I sit in my car. Once an hour, I drive around this one part of the neighborhood that's under construction, which is, you know, literally like four or five blocks square. Yeah. And, uh, you know, watch movies on my phone, listen to audio books, read books on my phone, stuff like that. That's totally admissible, according to my boss. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I have the uh, – have the uh, – place all to myself. I don't work with anybody else. Yeah. And, uh, you know, but minimum wage. 
Yeah. You know, minimum wage. Now, what's funny is he's got two sites. He's got one here in uh, League City, which is South Houston. Hey, League City peeps. And another one over in Manville. Hey, Manville peeps. Bill, our listener, might know where these are. I'm, I'm not sure. Yeah. Um, but uh, in the Manville site, uh, there are these two guys. There's three guys that cover it, and there's these two guys. One shows up at work in his van, texts the boss to tell him he's there, and then goes yeah. to sleep and doesn't wake up until his shift is over. Okay. okay. The other guy, the other guy is supposed to be there at like six in the evening to midnight. Uh-huh. He texts his boss from wherever he is saying he's on site, but he actually yeah. doesn't show up until 11 p.m. So he's only there for an hour. And it's far enough away from where the boss lives. It's like an hour and a half trip that he just doesn't bother checking. And these guys are just totally screwing him. Yeah, so I should yeah. have my boss listen to episode, what is this, nine? Uh, this would be nine. You know. I am almost positive. If it's not nine, our listeners can be an asshole and point it out to us if they want. Yeah. We like assholes. We like assholes. And you can do that on our Facebook page. Yeah. <laughs> go to you Facebook do. and search Dying Generation. Or follow us on Twitter at Dying Generation. Or email us at Dying, sorry, Dying at UndeadCow.com. <laughs> there you go. More pimping, straight pimping. You just showed them the back of your hand. <laughs> Yes, this is episode nine. Okay, I wasn't sure. I'm kind of daisical. Yeah, but uh, yeah, I uh, worked uh, seventy five hours last week. Yeah, can you believe that? Almost two weeks of work crammed into one week. I told my boss that whenever I start collecting my disability, which is at the beginning of December, I'm going to have to go down to part time. Right. Uh, but, and he's fine with that, but what he doesn't know is that it's also going to be my two weeks' notice. So if uh-huh. he's listening, surprise! <laughs> yeah. You know. And uh, so then I'm going to retire. Yeah. And uh, write. I'm going to write. And produce. I've decided this is what I'm going to do. Is I'm going to take my screenplays. Right. And I'm going to put together a cast and crew to make the right. screenplay, just like a producer does. You know, not the executive producer yeah. who provides the money, but the producer producer. And put it the package all together and then have this investor guy I know do the go to the investors and find the money right. and do it that way because I'm not going to be able to direct a film wherever I'm on disability. That, that won't fly. Right. Uh, you know, and my, my specific problems that I have, like my back issue and stuff like that, is going to make it almost impossible to spend 14 hours a day on a set. Yeah. Uh, so that's what I'm doing with Empty. Uh, the uh, Shape of Madness, I'm probably going to try and direct myself because it's actually fairly fairly low, uh, what do you call it, low budget and stuff and, and low uh the intensity, it's not going to be like a fast-moving shoot to where we're going from location to location and stuff. There's basically, you know, three locations. Uh, so direct that one and then, and then you know, be a producer and produce films and, you know, take a percentage. And whenever I get to the point that I'm making more than what I'm allowed to make on disability, I'll give up disability and, you know, yeah. live off the profits of my my hard work, my sweat and toil. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Doesn't it sound like a plan? It does. That is really kind of what I am hoping for with Bob, which I'm having a real love-hate relationship with. (laughs) (laughs) Why is that? (laughs) Oh, man, just trying to get this fucking thing off the ground, man. I don't know what to... I, I, I don't know how, without spending money, I don't mm-hmm. know how to do it, you know? Yeah. Uh, look, everybody I know has got to be, got to know that I'm doing this fucking show by now, you mm-hmm. know? 
Yeah. Uh, I'm tweeting on Facebook and all that kind of shit. You know, yeah. And maybe maybe any particular episode, meh, 20 views. Really? You know? Yeah. Well. Yeah. And I just can't see how it's like a, a percentage of the people who see this, they're going to fucking like it. You know? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So like the uh, so I'm trying to work on some more interesting ads to tweet and shit like that. Yeah. Because if I find if I if I get into Photoshop and I make like a some kind of an interesting picture. Yeah. Well, I could put a fuckload more than 140 characters in that picture. Yeah. You know. That's right. And just put it with the leak. With the yeah. leak. Yeah. You know, so that's one thing. Um, but then I'm kind of considering maybe spending some money in, like, advertising with Google and shit like that. Yeah. So, and see what happens there. I was looking around YouTube, and I accidentally clicked on the wrong fucking button, and it started trying to set up Google Ads for me. Uh-huh. All right? I thought it was going – I thought I was allowing it to show Google Ads, you know? Yeah. So that there would be ads from other websites and shit like that, other, other channels, and then mine would be advertised over there, something like that. But mm-hmm. it turned out to actually be Google Ads, and they sent me an email where I can get a free consultation. Um, cool. To try to help develop the keywords and shit like that. They gave me a 800 number. Now, I'm thinking that, like, I would just target Colorado Springs. Yeah. You know? You can do that. Concentrated area. I wish I could fucking target, um, like, colleges and medical marijuana dispensaries. Because <laughs> 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 I'm sorry, Bob is designed for people who are high. Yes, it is. <laughs> Definitely, except there's one problem. You know, sure, it's good for, it's made for people who smoke pot. It is definitely yeah. a no-no for anybody doing acid. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you will cook your brain if you watch Bob's Dirty Shirts on acid. The logic just, you know, ceases to exist and your brain implodes. I, I might incorporate that into the advertising. <laughs> 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 warning, misuse of, warning, warning, misuse of Bob's dirty shorts may result in injury or death. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So uh, that's kind of what I'm thinking of doing, you know. Uh, yeah. We just shot again uh, this past Saturday. Yeah. And it was another really good shoot. Like, I, I, I think my our first shoot was good. Our second shoot, not so good. Yeah. And last night is almost, is, is like either as good as the first night or better. Oh, okay. You know, because I just got, uh, instead of Jeannie sitting over the couch, okay, where I'm just working to the camera. Uh-huh. But I've had, I've had a loose script as well. Yeah. You know, <laughs> so I'll just work off the camera. Uh, and work off the script. So I really didn't feel like doing it this time because I just haven't kind of been liking it. So this time I had Jeannie sit directly in front of me. Uh-huh. And I just, I just riffed for like three fucking hours. Yeah. You know. So I think it's coming off a lot more natural and a lot more fun. <laughs> yeah. But we came out with 80 episodes worth from that. Nice. That I'm going to work on cutting up. Yeah. You know. And the cutting is easy, man. It's almost fucking mechanical now. Yeah, I just put, already put, cut over a hundred. Yeah. You know. So the yep. cutting goes quick when I can do it. There you go. You have you have enough content for fifty years and thank you. <laughs> It'll go on forever. It'll, it'll turn into one of these iconic things, you know. It's been going for it's, yeah. a, it's the longest running web series in the history of mankind. I'll be dead, but yeah, you'll be long. You'll be long dead. 
Yeah. It'll be it'll be public domain, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so that's that's kind of that there, you know. If it gets rolling, I mean, did you see the did you see the um, video that Tim Gravelin put up? The Jedi. Um, no, I didn't. Okay, he made this video for this woman who wrote a book. Uh huh. Okay, an ebook. She's like down in the fountain somewhere. Uh, the librarian, the werewolf, and I. Oh yeah, I saw that. <laughs> yeah. Ugh. Well, it just all of a sudden blew up one fucking day. And yeah. He just threw it on his YouTube page and like, you know, that was it. Yeah. But she can do with whatever she wants with it. Yeah. And uh, probably because you were telling. Fucking, well, probably because people were hearing how god awful it was. What's that? I said probably because people were hearing how god awful it was. Hey, he still made two thousand fucking bucks off of it. Yeah. There you go. You know what I mean? Yep. I mean, if 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 I could do that, and I think I can, I just have to figure out how to get the fucking word out there. Yeah. Bob can get two hundred in a day. Yeah. And then that's two hundred per episode. Yeah. You know, here's my fucking living. I make two uh-huh. two thousand a month at my two thousand a month at my fucking job. Yeah. You know. That's more than I make on disability. Yeah. More so than I would need, make work in security. Yeah. So, uh, so I would need 200,000 views on any single one of those videos. Yeah. You know. And I'm good. Yeah. There you, you go. Know, I can quit the job. I can keep myself getting taken care of. You know, and I, I'm including tax and, and insurance and shit in that 2000. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Maybe yeah, well, twenty five hundred. You know that would be that would be awesome. I mean, isn't that the dream to live off your product? Yeah, yeah. I don't want to create great art. I just want to survive off my product. And then actually doing Bob, you know, yeah, is a ball lot of fun. Yeah, I bet. You know, um, we have beer on Bob Day. You know, nice. You got to have a couple. Come on, have, you you, have, you haven't seen the latest fucking shit, and it's it's, it's <laughs> insane. And some might be a little controversial too, because I just let Bob kind of do what he wants to do, and yeah, he has he can use language, <laughs> can he? <laughs> and the occasional ethnic slur, you know. <laughs> um, there's a lot of riffing on Jesus. <laughs> a lot of riffing on Jesus. A, a, a good bit, yeah. What are you? But, you know, but then me and Jeannie would just be sitting there talking, you know? And mm-hmm. while I'm talking to her, I'm about to say something to her, and I'm like, that's kind of a funny line. And yeah. I would raise the puppet, and she would know I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go into a bit. <laughs> <laughs> I would raise the puppet. Is that anything like Northling the Garfa? Uh, it is very similar. It is similar. Uh, <laughs> oh God! I'm raising little. the I'm raising the puppet. Because <laughs> he's too fa- too small to fit over my dick. Ah, here he is. Yeah, yeah. That's a shame. That that can be a shame. Yes. Yeah. That's like I, I found out I was out with a friend of mine, and we were at Walmart, and uh, they needed to get a pair of shoes, right? Yeah. And so I'm like, you know, I wear I wear a size 10 and a half, you know, not bad for a guy. You know, not great, but not bad. And I asked him, you know, so it's what size do you wear? Nine and a half? Or no, eight and a half. Eight and, eight and a half. half. And it was like I had to bite my tongue to keep from going, God damn, your penis must be small. You know, it was all I could do not to spurt that out. Yeah. It was funny. But I was like, wow, eight and a half. That's, well, do you, do that's you crazy. Have, do you have Celtic feet? Because mine are, mine are like almost classic Celtic feet. Which is what? Very hobbit-like. 
Um, Hobbit like. Yeah. Uh. So like, if I can get a triple E, I would wear a ten and a half. Yeah. But normally I have to get like twelves or thirteens. Yeah, yeah, I wear a ten and a half wide. Yeah. I have to get wide, otherwise my my bones are completely crushed. Yeah. And I have Edwards disease, as I understand it's called. What's that? Where your second toe next to the big toe is longer than your big toe. Is, oh. Yeah. Yeah. It's called Edwards disease. I did not know that was called anything. Mm-hmm. It's called you be fucked was, up. I certainly didn't know it was a disease. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Everything's a disease now. You know? I mean, for yeah, God's sake, have... how long how long has the term shopaholic been around? Yeah. You know? That's got to be a good 20 or 30 years now. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. It's a disease. You're a shopaholic. You need to go to Shopaholics Anonymous <laughs> or, K- or Kmart. Uh, one or of the Kmart. Other. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. But uh, so things with the girl aren't going so great. No. Did I, did I tell you my – I told you my crazy story about the little short blonde-haired chick, right? About reading me uh, the lion act. Wasn't that yeah. last episode? Okay. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so the, the, the young woman, the 19-year-old, uh, finally moved into this apartment. She's been bugging me for like three months. When are you coming to get me? When are you getting a place so I can come live with you and stuff? I'm like, okay, well, I'm getting it. I got it. Uh, beginning of November, let her know it. And all of a sudden, she's not calling very much anymore. Yeah. And isn't able, I'm trying to find out, she lives in a group home, so I'm trying to find out what I have to do uh, to get her out of the group home. If I have to show, like, my proof of residence and stuff, so they know she's not going to be homeless and stuff, or what, and she's been, you know, I've been, you know, bugging her for this phone number for months to give me to talk to the person to find out what the requirements are, and she's dragging her feet and stuff, and, yeah, it's, it's, it's turning into this thing where I think that she just wants a phone romance. Yeah. You know, and I've been telling myself I really need to stop giving women the boyfriend experience over the phone. <laughs> I mean, I, I need to I need to make a fucking nine hundred number or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah, one nine hundred boyfriend. <laughs> because I give women the boyfriend experience all the fucking time, and almost never get pussy in return. You know. Well, that's not any kind of a fair deal at all. No, it's not. You know, hey, if you're going to slice off a piece of the pie, then I need to slice off a piece of the pie. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah, but I continuously give women the boyfriend experience, and it's just not good. I'm trying to, to cultivate that aloof asshole, you know. I don't yeah. really give a shit about you if you're giving me pussy kind of attitude. Yeah, but I'm but I'm just such a nice guy, and I care, and I like women, and they're nice, and I just can't stop it. <laughs> you're you're kind of whining. I'm just saying. Oh, am I? <laughs> oh my god! Like totally. <laughs> I'm like so sure. See, that would be an episode. <laughs> that would be an episode of Bob's Dirty Shorts. Uh huh. Uh huh. <laughs> oh my God, yeah. bagless toenails are so gnarly. Yeah. In, in fact, uh, in fact, I just released one like that this week. Did you? A Valley Girl yeah. one. Nice. From uh, yeah, from the last shoot. Because I had done a costume change. Uh huh. And uh. Now, for the first one, Jeannie was helping me get in and out of these fucking outfits. Yeah. You know, because they're teddies and shit like that. Yeah. So um, I'm getting out of whatever I was in, and I'm getting into my blue prom dress. Uh, my blue prom <laughs> dress. Yeah. Um, and I was like, I was like, I was about to call Jeannie, and I was like, yeah, come on. I'm 51 years old. I'm fairly intelligent. 
think I could probably figure out how to put on a fucking dress. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wrong. How wrong were you? Well, it was difficult, but I did it. But when I came back and I sat in front of the camera, I kind of thought about just that whole idea, and I was like, Mom, Bob's old enough to put on his own dresses. God. <laughs> God. That's funny. That's like the movie Valley Girl. You ever seen that with Nicolas Cage and Deborah? Fucking Foreman. Oh, my God. So fine. I haven't seen it recently. I really need to give it a rewatch, and I don't think I ever saw the whole thing. My favorite line in the entire movie is, I mean, God, you can make up that stuff tastes like Clorox. <laughs> I'm like, wow. Yeah, I love that movie. It's one of my, it is, it is my second favorite film of all time. My favorite film being Marty with Ernest Borgnine from, I think, like 56 or 58. Was the yeah. Academy Award winner for Best Picture that year, mm-hmm. written by uh, Patty Chapsky, the guy of Altered States fame. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know if I have a favorite at all, man. Uh, there are a lot of them in the running, you know. Yeah. But I just don't don't have an out-and-out favorite movie or anything like that. I mean, Jaws is way the fuck up there. Yeah. You know. You know. Yeah. But well, I am, I am divided, like, into into, like, groups. I, I, you know, I mean, yeah, Marty's my favorite movie of all time, but, you know, Valley Girl is, like, my second favorite, like, romantic comedy. Then I've got, you know, my favorite horror film is the original uh, My Bloody Valentine, you know, and things like that. Yeah. Yeah. So, I have lots of favorites. So, I guess it's not really my favorite, is it? Yeah, that's, that's yeah. They're yeah. my favorites. Like, like, The Exorcist is way up there. Yeah. You know, but you can't put that in the same category as Jaws. I know people call Jaws a horror movie. Uh, it's an action-adventure movie. That's how I feel about it, yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, so you, you just can't put them in the same category, and... and Gee, if you had to pick between the two, that'd be fucking tough. Yeah, it would. Because there are two different animals. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Let Jesus fuck you. Oh my God. Did you forget that part or something? Oh no, no. I'm just, I'm just thinking how we're getting into dying generation swing here. Just how kind of like fucked up the world is. I mean. Even in the 70s, look how much more, like, progressive we were than we are now. You, you would not get away with saying that in a movie, I don't think. Oh, no. You know? Not at all. Not at all. Yeah. And you definitely wouldn't be able to get a 14-year-old girl to do it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I mean, that's, you know, we've just become so conservative, man. When did that happen? Yeah, yeah. Oh, it happened during the uh, Nancy Reagan years. Uh, I think is when that all started, and the they yeah. started up the evangelical movement. And, I uh, I don't I don't know. I I, I kind of think it all started with the fucking Macarena. Hey, Macarena. Yeah, that's when it was. Digga, 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 Macarena. Digga, 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 Macarena. Digga, 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 Macarena. Hey, Macarena. Yeah. Yeah, I was never into the Macarena, thank God. I mean, I dance, you know, I'll get out there and shake my rump with the best of them, but I ain't doing no fucking Macarena. Or any, uh, what are some of the other line dances? Uh, you know? No. Oh, okay. Yeah, there are other. Uh, do, do I do I look like I ever danced? <laughs> huh? <laughs> well, do you I know, frankly, like ever... <laughs> frankly, you look like you never stand up. Uh, you know, but I didn't want to say that. You know, <laughs> I, I stand up as little as I can. Yeah, I know. I almost broke my hip the other day standing up. It was not good. Yeah. Yeah. I stood up and went, oh, God. Well, no, I, um, 
I went to stand up, and I guess a tendon in my hip was really tight and sort of like twanged across the uh, pelvic bone or whatever on the outside. And I was like, oh, God. <laughs> yeah, it was not good. Yeah. So we, we we hurt so easily these days. We're we're very brittle. Yeah, we are, and I'm I'm even more brittle uh, than I would be because after taking Prilosec for like ten years, all of a sudden yeah. they come out and go, oh yeah, by the way, it draws the calcium out of your bones. You're going to have osteoporosis if you used it for more than two weeks. I was like, oh. I took it for ten fucking years. Yeah, thank you. I've got I've got carnation instant breakfast for bones. Okay, <laughs> it is not good. But uh, so me and my brother, just totally off subject, but for some reason it brought me to mind. I guess that noise I made was uh, prostate exams because I'm getting ready to turn fifty. I'm at risk for prostate cancer and diabetes. And I was talking right. to my younger brother Tim last night, and we were talking about uh, prostate exams and. Right. Uh, and uh, it was like, you know, your my brother Chuck had had a prostate exam before I ever had one. He was like, dude, he said, don't, you're not going to like it. I'm like, why? He's like, you know, they stick your finger up in your ass, except they don't just stick their finger up in your ass. They, like, dig around in your ass, like, feeling all over your prostate. He said, it's like, you have to do whatever you can to keep from blowing load. And I'm sitting there thinking, okay, so basically the prostate is the male clitoris. You know, uh, have you ever had a, you ever had a prostate exam? No. Oh, my God, dude. I would pay $50 for a prostate exam. I, I, I just accept death. <laughs> I just accept death. Well, no, I I, I, I got to, you know, check my prostate and stuff like that. But, yeah, the, the thing was my brother Chuck went, and he said, you know, his doctor, the general practitioner, was, like, digging around in there like he'd lost a car or something up in there. You know, he was going to drive it out or something. And so and Chuck's like, oh, my God. And he said, I, I, I almost blew a load. He said, because, you know, it's the prostate. You're massaging it. And then the doctor says, well, it seems like you might have a growth on here, so we need to send you to a specialist. And he goes to the specialist, and the specialist is like, okay, go ahead and bend over the table here and, and uh, drop your pants in your underwear. He snaps on a glove, sprays on a little bit of lube. He goes, blink in out. Nope, you're good. What do you mean I'm good? You didn't even check it. Oh, yeah, you're fine. Okay, why is it that you, the expert, poked it in, came straight out, and I'm okay, but the other doctor is, like, digging around in there like there's gold? <laughs> you, know, I th- I, you know, I'm convinced that general practitioners are like, oh, yeah, come on. Come on, baby, come on. Come on. Come for me. Come on. Blow load. I'm not going to be happy until you fucking blow load all over the floor. Come on. Do it. Do it, baby. Yeah. Come on. Take it. Take it. All right, Mr. Johnson, you seem fine. You know. And you get the insurance money. Mr. Mr. Norfolk, this is your third prostate exam this month. Seriously, you're fine. <laughs> you know, so you know, I feel like every time I have a prostate exam, I should like bring a bouquet of flowers or something. Oh no, you're on the receiving end, man. No, 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 no. I'm on the. Res- I should get the flowers. You get the flowers. Well, I get the flowers. Yeah. Okay. I should ask for those next time. All I ever get is a lollipop. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, you know, you you, you got to be a smart consumer, you know. You do shop around. Uh huh. Uh-huh. You know, yeah. make sure yeah. make sure you're getting your money's worth. If you're paying one hundred and fifty dollars for a prostate exam, get the full yeah. fifteen minutes. Yeah, and I and and <laughs> I want I want kissing with tongue. Yeah. You know. Go, you you want a happy ending? God damn, God, damn, right God damn right I do. God damn right I do. Exactly. Jinx. Yeah. Jinx. Uh, <laughs> that's funny. Yeah, but yeah, we were just talking about that last night and it was cracking me up. But yeah, the the prostate is a male clitoris. So ladies, all our lady listeners out there, if you want to drive your man completely crazy and give him the best orgasm he's ever had, stick your finger in his ass facing up and finger that 
kind of like knob thing right there in his poo poo hole and then uh wait wait for the uh fountains to fucking go off like, you know, you're in Vegas. Okay. You know. What woman wants to do that? <laughs> Uh, you know, a woman that wants to make her man happy. (laughs) I mean, you can wear a rubber glove. We're used to it. (laughs) You know, we wouldn't want to, you know, get pregnant with a butt baby. It happens. I I, 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 I've been kind of fascinated by that idea since I saw the chicken lady on Kids in the Hall. Oh yeah. (laughs) Yeah. That's crazy. You were, I don't know if it was. Be, there's there's gotta be, there's, there's gotta be creatures out there like that. There has to be, yeah. yeah. Just like, just like the, the Russian gorilla man. Yeah. You heard about that? Or, or the, uh, the goat man of Choate Road here in Houston. Yeah. Really? I'm not, I'm not even sure there's a Choate Road anymore, but yeah, that, that was a big thing during the early, late seventies. I think it was all through the seventies and early eighties. Uh, that there was a half man, half goat out on Choate Road. Huh. Yeah. So, mysteries and wonders, ladies and gentlemen. Exactly. Exactly. Well, I hate to say this, but guess what time it is? All right. It's time that we wrap it up for this week. Got anything oh. to do? Uh, I've been pimping all show, man. <laughs> That's all I've been doing. <laughs> <laughs> Go for okay, it. well, uh, check out my book on Amazon.com, Dreaded Friday and Other Tales, a collection of short stories, The Alleys Ran Red, a horror detective novel, and The Spy and Mom's Clothing under the nom de plume Maxwell Robeson, which is a women's action investor adventure novella. Ooh, man, rented tongue. <laughs> and uh, also check out the uh, movie I co-wrote, uh, Haunted Trailer, featuring Ron Jeremy, yes, the porn legend, doing some comedy for you. And uh, look for our new movie called Getting Schooled, coming soon to a uh, venue near you. And I think that's all I got to film. All right. So that'll do it for this week of Dying Generation. Talk to you next week. I am Bunny Williams, and with me is... Stephen Scott Norfolk.